Hi, folks. It's a real pleasure to see you all again. Hey, little fella. Ha, of course I didn't forget about you all. Well, if we're all ready, it's time for another edition of TV Heaven. This is the show where the nation's sexiest, raunchiest entertainers reveal all they love and hate most on telly. <laughs> Tonight we've got the ideal guest for the show. He's funny, he's young, and he's been a bit ill recently, so he's watched a lot of telly. Please welcome <laughs> Lee Mack! Sure. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Well, your first choice tonight is it's TV Heaven. It's Stars in Their Eyes. Or In Stars Eyes There. <laughs> what is it you like about Stars in Their Eyes so much? Well, because it, it's totally like surreal TV, isn't it? I mean, that's what I love about it, because I, I, like the rest of us, I was chugging along nicely watching TV, mid-80s, <laughs> sort of that, thinking, this is great, I'm loving it. But I, what I really want to see, more than anything in the world, is a meat packer from Darlington pretending he's the bass player from the Thompson Twins. <laughs> When's that going to happen? Yeah. And then, Matthew Kelly saved my life. Yeah, well, I think for a lot of people, the most interesting thing about the show is guessing who the yeah. contestant's going to be. And have a look at this clip. And if you can guess who he's going to be, you're either clairvoyant or the friend that put him up to it. Tell me a bit more about him. <clears throat> well, his stage name is an anagram of his surname. Yeah. And he sang the theme tune to this film, Never Ending Story. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Jonathan. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Limal from Kajagoogoo. Limal! funnier after that. <laughs> he peaked and after about the first second, but... Um... It's surreal, like you said, and I love the fact, I and mean, that clip's great, because I love the fact that he does say, uh, you know, to try and give clues, he mm. says uh, that this singer is actually an anagram of his surname. Mm. That's only a clue if you give us his surname. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's not a clue, is it? No. You're not going to go, hmm. <laughs> Let me work this out. <laughs> so I have to guess the surname of someone I don't know who they are. Yeah. And then work out if it's possible to make an anagram of them, and yeah. is that person famous? Yeah. What people don't realize, that was a four hour record, just yeah. up into that bit, and someone told straight, LAMAL! Yeah. <laughs> and action. Yeah, well, you, you wouldn't tell them, you just sat there going, nope, until you guess it. <laughs> there's, no, there's no dancing about from me. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to the real reason you chose yeah. the show. Now, it, yeah, I'd like to point out that even though I love stars in their eyes, right? That, that, is, that in itself wouldn't be enough for me. I wouldn't have chosen it if it wasn't for this next thing. Because yeah. to me, this has gone into my head. I dream about this mm. as the most surreal piece of television that has ever been on TV. And I have never seen that dress you wear All the highlights in your head that catch your eye I have been blind The lady in red Is it gone, yeah? It's gone, yeah. Is it gone? It's gone. <laughs> Promise. Yeah. Promise it's gone. <laughs> ah. The thing is, right, there's one thing I know that you shouldn't really do in life, 
and that is to look into the eyes of another man dressed as you <laughs> and then have up the audacity to say, I've never seen you looking so lovely. <laughs> That's yeah. not permissible, is yeah. it? It's, it's troubling, isn't it? It's, it's just... Amazing. I can't... I don't know where to start. Where yeah. do you want to start? Well, I, I just want to know what he whispered to him. <laughs> I like this idea, he went, I'm not the real De Burr either. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be asked. <laughs> I love the bit at the beginning, you know, when he looks to camera and goes like that. <laughs> maybe he knew, maybe he, goes, maybe he knew there'd be loads of people around the country shouting at the telly, going, <laughs> No! <laughs> it's just men, like, and it, it's just, he's, I'm sure there's one bit where he sort of like, looks like he's about to touch his own replica face. And, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like at one point he's going in for a kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I think Chris would, would kiss him himself. That, but not in a homosexual way. No, no, as well. no, that's different, though. It's like masturbating, isn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just him, isn't it? Yeah. Just him, you it's and him me. Playing. It's where I want to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just me. <laughs> These are the bits you don't hear on Lady in Red, aren't no, they? Yeah. <laughs> and look at those faces. I mean, <laughs> one of them's got like too many features and one hasn't got enough. <laughs> Well, most people who, who appear on Stars of Their Eyes, you know, end up working back at Asda. But for Ian Moore, it was the Asda car park. I guess I'm just a pal who picks you up each time you're down. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, yeah. People from Asda tell me that we had a lot more here for Ian Moore than they had for Christy Burke. <laughs> What does that say to you? It says that we've got a big star. I think he's the new star of the millennium, don't you? <laughs> Put Hull on the map now. Yeah, he's brilliant. Credit to Hull. Put Hull on the map. <laughs> All we've got to do now is give that map to the US Air Force and... <laughs> <laughs> Everything will be sorted. Well, Chris DeBerg turned up that night, because as they were doing a buy one, get one free special. <laughs> I think he wants him to stop. You. That's the reason he's coming. He wants you to stop, because yeah. you're doing my gigs for a third of the money yeah. that I get. <laughs> I is like that it. what he whispered, do you think, at that yeah. moment? Yeah. Lady in red, this has got to stop. <laughs> he's dancing with me. Yeah. I mean it, I'm not fucking about <laughs> Cheek to cheek. <laughs> I'm going to break your legs. <laughs> OK, we're staying in heaven for your next choice, and uh, it's something you love. It's a double act between one man and his arm. Why is it so aggressive? It's not aggressive. Not much. <laughs> I love Rodham. What, what, what do you like about it? Do you like seeing people getting attacked? <laughs> no, th th there's so much more to it than that. I think that's what people think. think. I think people think that it's just a bloke attacking people with a puppet, but what was brilliant about it was that he genuinely... It, without sounding too ponty about it, he brought it to life. I really, for years, still were a bit confused about the fact that, how does he do this? I mean, mm. and then someone explained that that's a false arm. I don't know if you knew that. That's... Uh, <laughs> But well, I found the one, that that's, the one that's hanging over like that's that. That's right, the one that doesn't move. That's about two foot longer than his other that's one. That's right. There's, there's a different colour to that arm. Yeah. yeah, that's not real. Yeah. It's the fact that he would attack someone, beat the hell out of them, and meanwhile there's another thing going on where he was having to stop, stop it, get off, and it was like so believable the way he was like yeah, separated great, from the bird. He, he's very, he was very skillful at it, yeah. wasn't he? Because even to this day, people still, I'm sure Michael Boxer still blames the bird. Because you don't associate it being him, you know what I mean? Do you think so? I think he's just, he's like, it's all Rod Hull's all right, but I'm, you know, the birds. So. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just stars like Parky that suffered from his groping and grabbing. The whole nation was happy to be pecked and groped by Rod. All frozen foods. You never know. They might have some frozen soup. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
us all day. No, but I mean, uh, you can't get any funnier than that, can you? Throwing yourself in a freezer. No. <laughs> That's, just, that's brilliant. He did that really well as well. He, he does it unbelievably well. Yeah. That, that that's, not, really a, that's not a soft landing. You're, you're no. landing on like frozen burgers, fro just frozen stuff. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to list it, it's all hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's pecking that woman at the till and he's, he's, and he's pecking those women. He actually gets her by the throat. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, I think there is an element that you have to go along with it. Yeah, I mean, I've got one here. Got one of these things here, <laughs> and uh, I think this is the point of entry. <laughs> um, I can sort of, in a strange way, know see where this is leading. <laughs> really? Sort of. No, I'm not going to. Don't want to go near you. All oh, right. No, I can't. His mouth's all screwed up. Yeah, it's not quite as frightening with a cleft palate. Can I you think. Saw that? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think he's going to. Uh, that's not quite the same, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Yeah, not so easy now, is it? Well, I think he's had a stroke. <laughs> Maybe Rod had really big thumbs. I don't know. Yeah. There we go. That's okay. it. That's better. There we go. Does that look cute? Have I got there? I'm looking forward to... He should look at me. <laughs> yeah. Are you happy with that? Oh, oh! So he did, did he ever attack himself? Of course he just threw him in a freezer! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's why I like your shoes. Do you know what? <laughs> I, I've been thinking about your argument. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> you can't attack me! <laughs> so, just do it. See, it's a lot more difficult than it looks, isn't it? Yeah. But you can't retaliate. You do can't attack. Because have you met my mate, Stephen the Shoe? <laughs> <laughs> you met him? <laughs> Stephen the Shoe? Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I actually look down because I'm northern to check I haven't got a hole in my sock. <laughs> stroke him, stroke him. No, stroke him. Nice, it's stroke nice. Him. That's what you should do, just stroke him. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what? I've changed my mind. <laughs> I think Rod Hull and Emu were rubbish. <laughs> okay, that's it for part one, and we'll be back with more of Me Max TV Heaven Telly Hell after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to TV Heaven, Telly Hell. I'm here with Lee Mack, who's telling us what he loves and loathes on TV. OK, your next choice is our first visit into Telly Hell, or with the consumer show, Are We Being Served? <laughs> and this guy that presents it in particular, Arkin Sally. Why do you hate this show? This is the most evil television programme that has ever been made. <laughs> it's just basically, for those who haven't seen the show, it's a bloke who goes round shopping with a hidden camera to show us how bad 15-year-olds are at serving. Mm. <laughs> well, who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's basically the only amazing thing about the show is, you know, you find out that some people who work in shops don't really want to work in shops. <laughs> and they may be just doing it to pay the rent or get some money for food or beer, probably. Yeah. <laughs> but here he is, there's, there's a clip of him here. He's using hidden cameras to spy on the underpaid and the overworked. Arkin Sali is a toughie, a top customer service expert. He's a staff training consultant at a top store and accepts nothing but the best. Um, yeah, I, I, I looked there, that's where I got that one from. Um, do you not have any in stock? I purposefully didn't say anything because I just wanted to see is she going to come up with any alternatives? Is she going to show me a similar shirt or is she going to offer to ring another branch or is she going to offer to tell me about when the orders come in? But nothing. We just, you know, so we just stood there in silence for a couple of seconds because I wasn't going to say anything and I don't think she knew what to say. Finally, she turns around and says, yeah, they've got one. Um, so she OK, so second floor, uh, reservations desk, Marble Arch. Marble Arch. OK. Oh, Marble Arch? Yeah. And it's like, I didn't ask for Marble Arch, I asked for Oxford Circus. It's a completely different store. It is a completely different store, but it is in the same street. <laughs> what an like insufferable fact... toss pot. <laughs> you see, I like the fact that it's subtitled as well, as well, for those people that can't speak condescending twat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love the bit when she introduces them at the beginning, when she says, um, Arkin, he's a toughie. Oh, yeah, he's a toughie, isn't he? Mm. Oh, I said Oxford Street! No! <laughs> oh, I'm not having it! No! 
one. <laughs> I asked for a size 15 and then I got 14. I'm a toughie. <laughs> oh, for crap. These are people that haven't got the right clothes. They're not paedophiles. <laughs> What? It's just this idea that it's some sort of important thing, you know. And it's, it's, just like, a... it's like walking behind a, a road sweeper going, Oi, mate, you missed a bit. Go <laughs> yeah. on, pick it up. <laughs> pick it up! <laughs> it's, it's just nasty and unnecessary. It's like finding fault in something which, you know, nobody expects great service in a shop. Exactly. It's not 1926. You know, I'm not Lord Rothermere. You know, I expect, when I go into Boots, I expect some badly motivated girl with skin problems just go... Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. I like that. I find that reassuring. If someone, I go to shops and I go, anything you want, I just go, go away! Leave me alone! <laughs> There's one bit of that particular show, I think, where he's buying some shoes and he wants to test out the bloke who's selling him the shoes. He goes, can you recommend some socks to me to go with these shoes? If that had been me, I'd have go, you are mixing me up with someone who gives a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Choose your own bloody socks. <laughs> Sometimes, Arkin, you're on your own in life. There's not going to be someone there to help you. You've got to think for yourself, the socks. Yeah. But, you know, look, just this idea that someone's going to be there, everything... I, listen, I'm under no illusions, the service in this country is pretty rubbish, right? But I'm also aware, uh, I've been to America, and I don't want a load of grinning, inane, false twats yeah. pretending they care when they don't. Not the Americans, the people that work in the shop in America. <laughs> Fuck it, all Americans. Right? <laughs> and you can't win, you can't win. Because there's a bit, right, where what he does is he, he, he carries on the argument for a while. And he goes, I, I, need, I need a different size, like a 15 or a 14. <laughs> Not like it's one big bloody musical. Right? <laughs> she, he goes, right? So, so the shop assistant, obviously, go, oh, fucking hell, I'll go. So she goes off, she has a look. He then looks, has the cheek to look in the camera and go, she's left the till unattended. <laughs> There's people behind me waiting, there's no one here. Mm. That's because of you, you yeah. fucking idiot! Yeah. Christ! No, he's a monumental cock. <laughs> My name is Sean Locke, and I said that on television, and I mean it. <laughs> OK, well, we're going to move on to your next choice, your next and your final choice. It's TV heaven for you, and it combines every bloke's idea of perfect telly, which is sport and drinking. <laughs> Now then, just slipped out for a minute from the biggest bonanza of sporting skill I've ever clapped eyes on. Down here at the Queen's Hotel in Leeds, we've got 60-odd of the best players I've ever seen in my life. None of your Charlton and your Geoffrey boycotts, mind you. This bunch of ads are kings at those sports you get up and down the land in every pub. Play requires 40. Yes, sir! That was, that was Indoor League from 1973. It's quite a cult show, you know, now, which in my experience usually means it's rubbish, but tell us what you like. That song. I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> that was prime-time television, and then it didn't quite work out like they expected. They shoved it back at the 5.15 slot, so it's virtually kids' TV. <laughs> now, in a, in a world of faceless, BBC, broom cupboard-type young presenters, Right? <laughs> Wouldn't you prefer to see a bloke on Blue Peter going, and now then, <laughs> right, I made something I want you lot to make, but, right, you'll have to wait, because I've got my pipe, I've been piped. I managed, nearly went. No, nearly went. <laughs> but the, it, it was just, it was mental. I mean, this was proper, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I grew up in a pub in, in the 70s up north, and we did have games like that in the pub. And to see that as treated like the Olympics by Fred Truman, <laughs> it's just, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's just... Anyway, they play a lot of shove eightney in, in, in the show, in indoor league. I'm not, not going to show it, because it's too boring. <laughs> but we've got some other bits. And Joe, George seems to have got a nine in one. Now he is on a maximum. The maximum at this game is 27. I personally have never seen it done. The most I've ever seen is 25. Oh, what a bad luck we were on. Now remember all you lots out at Trent. This is real darts on a Yorkshire board. No trebles, no fluky shots. Just a hell of a lot of skill. There he goes. That's Ooh. better. Oh! Well done, Jim. The drama, the drama, the stark naked drama. <laughs> stark naked, naked drama. drama. Oh. <laughs> I love the way Fred says, uh, 
This is for all you lot in London, right? This is a proper board with no trebles. Is there any bloke in the world that can make a treble sound like a sign of homosexuality? <laughs> <laughs> trebles? Queers. <laughs> There's something really poncy about throwing a treble. Yeah. Uh. Aye. Oh, you mean for ladies? Yeah. It's, a, it's a rare chance to get to see a really good cheese skittler in action, though. Well, what? What? Yes, because, you know, those guys, he was at the top of his game then. His hair it was like a waterfall, wasn't it? <laughs> just some grease, just a waterfall of greasy hair. He looks like he's murdered. I'd he? like to see a spin off Cheese Skittler's Wives. <laughs> Just a load of women in housecoats grumbling about the price of <laughs> price of braising steak. <laughs> going, oh, bloody hell, it's gone up again. <laughs> <laughs> I love the, the bit that we didn't see there was the intro to that clip where Fred Truman goes, and now for the first time ever on British television, cheese skittles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Fred, there's a reason for that. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's brilliant, though. You, you, you know, that's just... It's a great show. If it was up to me, I'd have it as an Olympic sport. I mean... But it great, so you were great. It was a lad growing up in a northern pub. Was it... Was, there, was it... Did, was it nice? We had... We had <laughs> no, we did. We had... <laughs> Listen, you condescending southern shit. <laughs> I'm pissed they put something in that beer. We did. We had dogs. Was, was it had... nice in your pub in the up north? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, park in it. Is it nice, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Can I have another one of those? <laughs> So what was it like, going up a northern pub? Did you get, like, people going, eh, little fella, and they give you a clout? Well, the thing is, it's difficult, isn't it? Because I'm now supposed to sit here, defend, you know, because you're slightly doing it as a joke, you take the piss, but I'm now going to defend it. But if someone's just turned over and doesn't know the setup to this, I'm going to be going, the problem with you, Sean, is you're stereotyping the north. <laughs> <laughs> you are stereotyping the north, <laughs> and I won't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Happen. <laughs> well, Lee, thanks for that glimpse into your TV heaven telly hell. And before you go, is there any performance you'd like to repeat? Do you know what? There is, actually. Marvellous. Ladies and gentlemen, Lee Mack! <laughs> Lee Mack. Who are you going to be for us tonight? Everybody says I look like this person. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be... Limal! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Limal! Hey, girl! things here. Uh, and uh, I think this is the point of entry. <laughs> <laughs> I can sort of, in a strange way, know, see where this is leading. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. No, I'm not going to go near you. Oh, right. No, I can't. His mouth's all screwed up. Yeah, it's not quite as frightening with a cleft palate. I think... You saw that? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I think he's going to... I think he's going to... That's not quite the same, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Not so easy now, is it? I think he's had a stroke. <laughs> Maybe Rod had really big thumbs. I don't know. Yeah. There we go. That's okay. it. That's better. There we go. Does that look cute? Have I got there? I'm looking forward to... You should look at me. <laughs> yeah. You happy with that? Ow! Ow! 
So he didn't, did he ever attack himself? Of course he just threw him in a freezer! <laughs> 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 That's why I like your shoes. Do you know what? <laughs> I, I've been thinking about your argument. <laughs> Sold off! <laughs> you can't attack me! <laughs> Sorry, just throw it. See, it's a lot more difficult than it looks, isn't it? Yeah. But you can't retaliate. You can't attack. Because have you met my mate Stephen the Shoe? <laughs> <laughs> you met him? <laughs> Stephen the Shoe? Yeah, come on. <laughs> I actually look down because I'm northern to check I haven't got a hole in my sock. <laughs> <laughs> stroke him, stroke him. No, stroke him. Nice, it's nice. Stroke him, that's what you should do, just stroke him. Yeah, I don't... I, do you know what, I've changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think Rod Hull and Emu were rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that's it for part one, and we'll be back with more of Nemax TV Heaven, Telly Hell, after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to TV Heaven, Telly Hell. I'm here with Lee Mack, who's telling us what he loves and loathes on TV. OK, your next choice is our first visit into Telly Hell, but with the consumer show, Are We Being Served? And this guy that presents it in particular, Arkin Sally. Why do you hate this show? This is the most evil television programme that has ever been made. <laughs> it's just basically, for those who haven't seen this show, it's a bloke who goes round shopping with a hidden camera to show us how bad 15-year-olds are at serving. Mm. <laughs> well, who would have thought? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's basically the only amazing thing about the show is... Hi, folks. It's a real pleasure to see you all again. Hey, little fella. Ha! Of course I didn't forget about you all. Well, if we're all ready, it's time for another edition of TV Heaven. <laughs> This is a show where the nation's sexiest, raunchiest entertainers reveal all they love and hate most on telly. <laughs> Tonight we've got the ideal guest for the show. He's funny, he's young, and he's been a bit ill recently, so he's watched a lot of telly. Please welcome <laughs> Lee Mack! Hello, Sean. Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Well, your first choice tonight is it's TV Heaven. It's Stars in Their Eyes. Or In Stars Eyes There. <laughs> what is it you like about Stars in Their Eyes so much? Well, because it, it's totally like surreal TV, isn't it? I mean, that's what I love about it, because I, I, like the rest of us, I was chugging along nicely watching TV, mid-80s, <laughs> sort of that, thinking, this is great, I'm loving it. But I, what I really want to see, more than anything in the world, is a meat packer from Darlington pretending he's the bass player from the Thompson Twins. <laughs> <laughs> When's that going to happen? Yeah. And then, Matthew Kelly saved my life. Yeah, well, I think for a lot of people, the most interesting thing about the show is guessing who the yeah. contestant's going to be. And have a look at this clip. And if you can guess who he's going to be, you're either clairvoyant or the friend that put him up to it. <laughs> Tell me a bit more about him. <clears throat> well, his stage name is an anagram of his surname. Yeah. And he sang the theme tune to this film, Never Ending Story. Tell us who you're going to be tonight, Jonathan. Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Limal from Kajagoogoo. Limal! I just want to know what he whispered to him. <laughs> I like this idea, he went, I'm not the real De Burr either. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be asked. <laughs> I love the bit at the beginning, you know, when he looks to camera and goes like that. <laughs> maybe he knew, maybe he, just goes, maybe he knew there'd be loads of people around the country shouting at the telly, going, <laughs> No! <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just mental, and it, it's just, he's, I'm sure there's one bit where he sort of like, looks like he's about to touch his own replica face. And, yeah. <laughs> it looks like at one point he's going in for a kiss. Yeah. You know? well, well, I think, think Chris would, would kiss him do that. But not in a homosexual way No, 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 all. that's different though, it's like masturbating, isn't it? Yeah. Because <laughs> it's just him, isn't it? Yeah. Just him, you it's and him me, playing. it's where I want to be, yeah. you know? <laughs> Just me. <laughs> These are the bits you don't hear on Lady in Red, aren't no, they? Yeah. <laughs> and look at those faces, I mean. One of them's got, like, too many features and one hasn't got enough. <laughs> well, most people who, who appear on Stars of Their Eyes, you know, end up working back at Asda. But for Ian Moore, it was the Asda car park. I guess I'm just a girl who picks you up each time you down. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, yeah. The people from Asda tell me that we had a lot more here for Ian Moore than they had for Christy Burke. <laughs> What does that say to you? Uh, it says that we've got a big star. I think he's the new star of the millennium, don't you? He's really put Hull on the map now. Yeah, he's pretty uh, predictable. Put Hull on the map. <laughs> All we've got to do now is give that map to the US Air Force and... <laughs> Everything will be sorted. Well, Chris de Burke turned up that night, because Asda were doing a buy one, get one free special. <laughs> but he, I think he wants him to stop. You. That's the reason he's coming, he wants you to stop, because you're doing my gigs for a third of the money yeah. that I get. <laughs> I Is like that it. what he whispered, do you think, at that yeah. moment? Yeah. Lady in red, this has got to stop. <laughs> he's dancing with me. Yeah. I mean it, I'm not fucking about <laughs> Cheek to cheek. <laughs> I'm going to break your legs. <laughs> Okay, we're staying in heaven for your next choice, and uh, it's something you love. It's a double act between one man and his arm. Why is it so aggressive? It's not aggressive. Not much. <laughs> <laughs> not all the time. Lunatic. It's, it's not. <laughs> 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 it's not aggressive. It's not aggressive. It's not aggressive. It doesn't get any funnier after that. <laughs> He peaked, and after about the first second, but um... it's surreal. Like you said, I love the fact, and that clip's great because I love the fact that he does say, uh, you know, to try and give clues. He says uh, that this singer is actually an anagram of his surname. Mm. That's only a clue if you give us his surname. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. it's not a clue, is it? No. You're not going to go. Hmm. <laughs> Let me work this out. So I have to guess the surname of someone I don't know who they are. Yeah. And then work out if it's possible to make an anagram of them, and yeah. is that person famous? Yeah. What people don't realize, that was a four hour record, just yeah. up until that bit, and someone told the straight, LAMAL! <laughs> and action. Yeah, well, you, you wouldn't tell them, you just sat there going, no, nope, until you <laughs> guess it. There's no, there's no prancing about from me. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's move on to the real reason you chose yeah. the show. Isn't now, yeah, I'd like to point out that even though I love stars in their eyes, right? That, that, is, that in itself wouldn't be enough for me. I wouldn't have chosen it if it wasn't for this next thing. Because yeah. to me, this has gone into my head. I dream about this mm. as the most surreal piece of television that has ever been on TV. And I have never seen that dress you wear All the highlights in your head that catch your eye I have been blind The lady in red There's nobody here. There's nobody here. It's just you and me. It's just you and me. It's Uh, is, it, uh, is it gone yet? It's gone, yeah. Is it gone? It's gone. <laughs> Promise. Yeah. Promise it's gone. <laughs> ah. The thing is, right, there's one thing I know that you shouldn't really do in life, and that is <laughs> to look into the eyes of another man dressed as you <laughs> and then have up the audacity to say, I've never seen you looking so lovely. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. not permissible, is yeah. it? It's, it's troubling, isn't it? It's, it's so just... amazing. <laughs> I can't, I don't know where to start. Where yeah. do you want to start? Well...
Rod Hull and Emu there. I love Rod Hull. What do you, what do you, mean, what do you like about it? Do you like seeing people getting attacked? <laughs> no, there's so much more to it than that. I think that's what people think. think. I think people think that it's just a bloke attacking people with a puppet, but what was brilliant about it was that he genuinely... Without sounding too poncy about it, he brought it to life. I really, for years, still were a bit confused about the fact that, how does he do this? I mean, mm. and then someone explained that that's a false arm. I don't know if you knew that. That's, uh... <laughs> but I well, found the that... The one that's <laughs> hanging over like that's that. That's right, the one that doesn't move. It's about two foot longer than his other that's one. That's right. <laughs> there's, there's a different colour to that arm. Yeah. yeah, that's not real. Yeah. It's the fact that he would attack someone beat the hell out of them. And meanwhile, there's another thing going on where he was having to stop, stop it, get off. And it was like so believable the way he was like yeah, separated it's a great, from the bird. It, it, very, he was very skillful at it, yeah. wasn't it? Because even to this day, people still, I'm sure Michael Boxer still blames the bird. Because you don't associate it being him, you know what I mean? Do you think so? I think he's just like, it's all Rod Hull's all right, but I'm, you know, the birds. So. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't just stars like Parky that suffered from his groping and grabbing. The whole nation was happy to be pecked and groped by Rod. All frozen foods. Never No, but I mean, that, you can't get any funnier than that, can you? Throwing yourself in a freezer. No. <laughs> that's, just, Good. that's brilliant. He did that really well as well. He, he does it unbelievably well. Yeah. That, that that's, not a, that's not a soft landing. You're, you're no. landing on like frozen burgers, fro just frozen stuff. Yeah. yeah. You don't have to listen. It's all hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's pecking that woman at the till, and he's, he's and he's pecking those women. He actually gets her by the throat. <laughs> <laughs> And she's going, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I, I mean, I, I think there is an element that you have to go along with it. Yeah, but I mean, 